Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about emphasis in your compositions, and specifically focusing on text. So to get things rolling, let's do a few experiments. In this rectangle, I'm going to show you some compositions. I'm going to count down from three, you're going to look at it, and keep track of what you saw first. All right, three, two, one. What did you see first? Well, probably you saw the thing that was different from the other things. Okay, I'm going to cleanse your palette a little bit, and we're going to try it again. Three, two, one, go. Okay, this time, my guess is you immediately went to the area of high contrast. And that lines up with what we talked about in the video about emphasis. Your eye is going to be drawn to what is different, and then also what is high contrast. Okay, let's do one final one. Three, two, one, go. Now I am pretty certain that you looked at the text. And in a lot of ways, this composition is exactly the same as the second one. I've just turned it upside down, but I added some text in there. And interestingly, text, even when it's lower contrast than the other focal point, the text is really what's going to grab you. If you know how to read English, this is going to be what you see first. And this is an important lesson when it comes to using text in your images. Because like it or not, it's going to grab the attention. And in this tug-of-war game, it's really not about fairness, it's just biology. We look at text. Now, if you look at this example of Rolling Stone, you can say, well, obviously Jay-Z is very important here. His face is most of the cover. And so in order to de-emphasize the title Rolling Stone, which most people can recognize, they've actually covered up some of the letters. And so in this way, the text becomes less readable, and the face becomes more readable. But you'll probably notice there's so much high contrast on the left side of this image that your eye is being pulled all over the place. And in fact, I find magazine covers like this a little bit confusing visually because they try and explain so much at one glance. It's like an overload of information because there's so many different high contrast text elements. Now, another more simple example here is the cover of the Pathfinder Core Rulebook. Here we've got two major text blocks that are sitting on top of a big fantasy illustration. So the way you might look at this is, number one, look at the biggest text. And then your eyes might wander a little down and see where there are faces in action, because we're also very drawn to eyeballs. And then after that, they'll drift down to the second biggest block of text. Another way this might go is you start by looking at the top block of text, and then you jump immediately down to the second block of text, and then eventually meander back into the middle and look at the action that's happening there. But I'll tell you one thing you're not going to look at. You are not going to look at this outer border. Because when you see that text, it's essentially the anchor. It is the edge of the image as far as you're concerned. Because you know that it is important, and you're going to look at it. And you also know that the center of the image is important because there's action happening there. But unless you had this as a poster printed on your wall and you looked at it every day, I'm guessing you're never going to notice the details that are outside of this boundary. Well, to hit this point home, let's go to the homepage of apple.com. They are notoriously good at sending a clear message. So let's see what their homepage looks like today. <laughs> All right, I can tell what they want me to buy, the new iPad. How do I know that? Because my eyes went immediately to the large, bold, black text. It's on a white background, it's the biggest text element on the page, and there's no denying that this is the focal point. After that, I'm probably going to look down at the product itself, but as soon as I looked at this page, and I'm guessing, same for you, what I saw was the text. Now, whether or not you are a professional, your art is eventually going to be placed next to text. Because certainly in commercial art, but in most art in general, text is a factor. So it's going to be important for you to understand how powerful text is and how it should relate to your composition. And certainly if you want to do things like book cover design, it is going to be essential to understand how to work it into your layout. So take some time today and look around at text and images. Look at the cover of things. Look at websites. The more you know about it, the more you can use it to your advantage. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.